Today we'll be taking a look at Anduin OS, which is an Ubuntu-based Linux distribution that aims to facilitate developers transitioning from Windows to Linux by preserving a similar look and workflow. I've explained countless times that one of the easiest ways to get a Windows user onto Linux is to just install a theme for their desktop environment that makes it look like Windows. And under the hood, Anduin OS uses GNOME, which is both very popular and very stable in the Linux world. And on Anduin, it's riced up to look a lot like Windows 11. And I'm all for distros that look like Windows, but taste like freedom. You can download Anduin from anduinos.com, link in the description, and the download link is right here smack on the front page, and you have a selection here of version 1.1, which they recommend for users that need a stable long-term version or if they're using it on older hardware. But the latest version is 1.3, codenamed Plucky Puffin, same as Ubuntu 2504, which is what this is based on. It ships with GNOME 48 and the Linux kernel version 6.14. And this is the one that I'm going to be testing today. Also, I highly recommend downloading the ISO as a torrent, not just because that's the base way to download files, but the direct server doesn't have a lot of bandwidth to spare for multiple parallel downloads since this is pretty much a hobby project, which we're going to talk about more in a little bit. So definitely use the decentralized download method. I'll personally be sneeding both ISOs on my two gigabit connection. So if you torrent Anduin, you might just be downloading it directly from me. How cool is that? So here I have the ISO booted up in a virtual machine and just like most Linux distros, you get to try before you buy and the price is still free as in beer. So as you can see, we have a Windows 11 like theme. The taskbar has the start menu right in the center, just like Windows 11. And I'm genuinely curious if this is something that people actually like. Obviously, Microsoft changed this to be the default position uh, here in the center instead of off to the left like it used to be. But I always end up putting it back over there in the left whenever I've had to use Windows 11. So comment below if you prefer this layout, the classic one, or something else. Now, obviously this doesn't look exactly like Windows, and that's probably a good thing to avoid copyright issues, especially since the developer of Anduin actually works for Microsoft, but not on Windows. Even though this doesn't look like a one-to-one -one, uh, Windows clone, it's still a very polished look. It's very responsive. If we go into the settings menu, you can see that this is also laid out in a very Windowsy way. Uh, of course, more like the newer settings menu rather than the control panel. And even though this is technically GNOME under the hood, uh, there's certain things that are missing. Like if we go into the appearance customization, there's a lot less features that are here for customizing the look compared to vanilla GNOME. Uh, there's no GNOME tweaks that are installed. And if we take a look at the extensions manager here, uh, this is also kind of a slimmed down version of the extensions manager, right? There isn't any option to install new extensions. Obviously, there's a lot of GNOME extensions that come pre-installed with Anduin OS. Uh, and all of this was done on purpose, I'm sure, to, I guess, not overwhelm people with so many customization options, which is kind of the standard across Linux. Obviously, you could go into your system and change things if you really wanted to, but by default, all of the knobs and dials that you can turn are condensed into just a couple of submenus, sort of like what Windows does. Um, and if we go back into settings here, I'll show you some more of what we've got. And you can see that it says Ubuntu Desktop here. It's Ubuntu Desktop, but I think it also uses uh, Debian packages. So there is some branding inconsistency that you might see throughout Anduin saying that it's based on Ubuntu or based on Debian. That's just a technicality that I don't think uh, really matters too much. If we click on this online accounts tab here, 
you can see that you've got options to configure your different online cloud accounts. So this is another thing that will make the transition from Windows to Linux if you're actually using these cloud accounts, uh, because then that way a lot of your data will get brought in automatically without you having to worry about doing local backups and accidentally nuking your system and then losing any data. Probably one of the main things that keeps people using the same operating system that they've been using. Uh, down here on the taskbar, you can see that we've got this weather app. This is actually uh, provided by Open Weather Map, or that's the API that it's taking information from. It's, uh, what is it, Open Weather Refined is the actual program. Yeah, GNOME Open Weather. So again, this is similar to what Windows has, because it has the proprietary Microsoft widget app down there, I believe in the same location too, bottom left-hand corner. So this is a GPL alternative. And if we go ahead and run the installer that's right here on the desktop, this should be pretty bog standard for a just works distribution. So uh, we choose our language here, go ahead and do English and English keyboard layout. And you can download updates while installing Anduin OS. So that's Good check right there. And then the third-party software for graphics, Wi-Fi hardware, and additional media formats. Very, very important because one of the things a lot of people complain about when they switch to Linux, especially if they're using a laptop, is, oh no, my Wi-Fi doesn't work. And that's really hard because a lot of the modern laptops don't even have an easy way to connect an ethernet to it. You gotta use some kind of a dongle. And so that whole hassle will really ruin a lot of people's first time Linux experiences. Uh, and same thing with NVIDIA drivers, needing those to work right out of the box. So very important we've got that. Um, and I'm not gonna continue past here because I've already installed Anduin OS. So I'm just gonna go ahead and reboot into the installed distribution in the virtual machine and finish talking about it. Now the installer for Anduin OS finishes pretty quickly and I think that's primarily due to the fairly small suite of applications that come pre-installed on it. There's a camera app, there's a chess app, the GNOME console and GNOME disk usage analyzer and disks. Basically you have the GNOME suite of applications pre-installed, of course Firefox um, and a torrenting application transmission. That's pretty much it. And if we go back, we have the GNOME software store that is also pre-installed with Anduin OS version 1.3. This is actually, I would say, the most notable difference between Anduin 1.1 and 1.3 that I'm running here because the previous version had a, I guess, software store app, or really I should say shortcut here in the application menu, but when you clicked on it, it was just a link to a web page that gave you instructions on how to install different popular applications through the terminal, which would disqualify Anduin OS as a beginner-friendly distro, in my opinion, because unfortunately, most non-techy people are gonna get scared of the command line, even though it is a much better way to manage applications. And as a long-term Linux user, I actually appreciate the original decision to not commit users to a specific form of package management. Uh, but now on the newer, I guess, more beginner-friendly version, uh, you get the GNOME software store so that you can easily install all the software you need. And there's a lot of applications that are here in the repos. Uh, we can start searching for Steam. Okay, that's one of the big ones so that people can play games on Linux. Uh, you've got Steam here and let's see if they've also got Proton. They do, so you can install Wine and all the compatibility tools fairly easily through that. And if we look on the, I guess, editor's choice, the editor's picks. We've got a videos app, photos, notes for GNOME. Uh, you've got ungoogled Chromium and Brave. Okay, so this is pretty interesting. This will probably expose a lot of people who are normally not that privacy aware, I guess I'd say, or aware of these applications to them. I guess Brave is a little bit uh, more popular, but ungoogled Chromium would be 
a more minimal solution to removing tracking from your browser while still using a Chromium-based browser, which a lot of people prefer. Now here in this GNOME store, the majority of the applications, and I believe all of the graphical applications, are provided as flat packs. So that's something that, again, a lot of advanced users might not want. So it would probably be better to use version 1.1 if you are really familiar with package management on Linux. Um, but I think for a lot of the newer people that are coming from Windows and haven't really used Linux are not going to mind that. They're probably not really going to know the differences. And so flat packs are just going to be more convenient for them. Now, the story behind Anduin OS is, I would say, a really positive one compared to most of the other Windows-like distros that kind of end up mimicking the bad parts of Microsoft, like hidden fees and tracking and security issues. So Anduin Zoo Zui, I'm sure I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but this person is the sole developer behind Anduin OS. And they're actually an engineer at Microsoft, but they mentioned in this blog post that they don't actually work on Windows. They said they mostly work on .NET applications. And because of their income from working as an engineer at Microsoft, they're in a good financial situation and they have no plans to commercialize the Anduin OS project. It was originally created as I guess you could say a skin or maybe a theme for Ubuntu to just make it look more like Windows, but still function like Ubuntu. And if we take a look at the console here and at our OS release file, you can see that it actually identifies itself as Ubuntu uh, and a Debian-like distro. So. Any help and guides and just administration that apply to Ubuntu should still apply to this distribution as well, making it really beginner friendly and honestly, one of the best distros, I think, to help people transition from using Windows to a Linux desktop. The only thing that I would really change with the latest version of Anduin OS, uh, which is just going to happen in the future because of how things go, would be to have it be a long-term support distribution because right now this one's only going to be supported till the end of this year, which also, again, doesn't mean it's magically just not going to work anymore. Same thing with Windows. Like I think Windows support also ends at the end of this year or maybe in October. So. Again, it's not like November 1st, Windows 10 is all of a sudden not going to work. But again, the short support window might be something that turns some people off from wanting to try and do an OS. So tell me your thoughts on it in the comments below. Like and share this video to hack the algorithm and check out my online store, based.win, where you can buy my awesome merch and accessories for your phone or laptop. 10% store-wide discount when you pay with Monero XMR at checkout. Have a great rest of your day.